the Lord was telling the disciples to beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees and the scribes. Because religious people do not want the Lord. Religious people want religion. All throughout the course of a person's childhood, you're raised differently, depending on what type of parenthood you have. But sometimes your parenthood consists of religious parents, which means they're trying to find their way. And in their mind, if you talk to them, they'll tell you, I know God, I'm a Christian, right? But yet they never find their way. Oftentimes, you as a child, you pick up that same narrative. You go out throughout your life and say, you know, I'm saved. I know the Lord. But really, it's just a continuation of those religious demons. Because the religious demons, they will give you a format in which you are now saved if you follow that format. You are now free, you're anointed, you're powerful, you're effective in the spirit world if you follow that format. But when you meet the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost will start resisting that format because the format wasn't even from him. And religious demons, their job is to get you into a setup to set you up so that when God talks, you'll resist God because according to the setup, you're already godly. According to the setup, you're already free. According to the setup, you're already wise. According to the setup, you're already pure. According to the setup, you're already on your way to heaven. Religious demons... They will have you pray while you're out of the will of God. Because now your confidence is in the prayers. And you're looking at it from the angle. If I wasn't in the will of God, how would I have the power to pray? How would I have the dedication to pray? But then you got to look at the other aspects. Who are you praying to? Are you praying to the person that has given you a setup for your life that you have rejected. The Bible says something powerful in the Gospels. It said, why call me Lord, Lord, and not do the things I tell you to do? One of the most powerful texts in the Gospels. Why call me Lord, Lord? This was the Lord talking. He said, why call me Lord, Lord? And not do the things I tell you to do. You know, we have a generation that's okay with saying, Lord, Lord. And in their minds, they figure if I could even grasp that vocabulary to come out of my mouth, I must be right. Because how could I still have respect for the Lord's name? See, I want you to hear this. Respecting the Lord is more than talk. You respect the Lord with your private schedule. Let me show you something. And if I get off this line right now and I go get me an electric cigarette, I start smoking vape. Let me show you something. I get drunk off of alcohol. Let me go even further. Say I get off of this line and I start stabbing people after I just spoke to you. Say I get off of this line and I go rape five people right now. Let's say I get off this line and I, I, start, I start scamming and doing a fraud business and start having people say uh, they're going to buy a product and then when they give me the money, I don't give them the product. Let me show you something. These are the areas of everybody's life where you depict respect for God. So how does one respect God is not just vocabulary because you know, your children could say, yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yes, mom. Yes, dad. But if they go to Sammy's house, when you told them not to go to Sammy's house, 
is their respect in calling you yes sir, yes ma'am, yes dad, yes mom, or is their respect is in following an instruction you gave them. So hereby you understand how God even measures who fears him. Because somebody right now might be joking and uh, say, oh, Jesus Christ. By the way, that's so annoying to me. Why? Why? You know, don't if you don't got the Holy Ghost in you, you won't get annoyed by people that call the Lord's name in vain. When you have the Holy Ghost in you, you get annoyed, irritated when you hear somebody call the Lord's name in vain. By the way, it's in every movie. It's in every movie. Every movie has somebody calling the Lord's name in vain, white, black, but mostly, I mean, just the mainstream movies, that's the common disrespect. But if you have the Holy Ghost, you hear somebody call the Lord's name in vain, you won't hear somebody. Why would, why when something happened, you'll say Jesus? Why you got to call Jesus name while you're emphasizing something that's Shocking to you. You hear some five, uh, 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 you hear five people get shot. You gotta say Jesus Christ. What? Huh? You gotta have an evil spirit to do that. You understand? You gotta have an evil spirit to call the Lord's name in vain. Cause the Holy Ghost won't let you do that. I I'm saying if the Holy Ghost is inside of you and lives inside of you, that wouldn't even be a part of your psychological evaluation when you want to respond to something. But that was just a side point. I want you to remember this. If you want to respect the Lord, it's not just in saying, Lord, Lord, it's in doing the things he tells you to do. There's things that the Lord, on purpose, he'll show you, this is what I like from you. This is what I want from you. And if you really are his, you'll give it to him. Um, as a pastor, I've studied people throughout the course of my life on what impartation I could give them. Not because I have the impartation, but what impartation I could give them according to what they have allowed to be imparted to them. Let me show you something about the kingdom of heaven. God gives you much based upon the much you have given him of yourself. So if you don't give God, that's why the Bible says that the word will enter into somebody's heart. And when it's on good ground, they'll bear 30, 60, 100 fold. The word was literally saying that these are measurements of what a person bears based upon how much they've given themselves over to the word. So if they have given over themselves to the word in 30%, the 30 realm, they only bear 30 fold. The 60 realm, 60 fold. 100 realm, 100 fold. The 100 fold is the highest of the measurements revealed in that text. Because that means that this person has given himself fully over. Let me tell you the marvelous strength of the anointing that happens when you give yourself over to the hundredfold. The tangible anointing is in the hundred. The prophet's reward is in the hundred. The hundredfold return is in the hundred. Miracle signs and wonders is in the hundred. Deliverance is in the hundred. Freedom is in the hundreds. Separation from wrong people is in the hundred. Now you understand. That's why. That's why you 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 could bear a certain fruit, and then you don't want to disconnect from certain people. You probably in the thirty. You hear the word, and then years later you still broke. You in the thirty. This just the honest truth. Now now you got to know the truth for the truth to make you free. You 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 keep going back to an old relationship or old habit. For years and years, you're in the 30, if anything. If anything, if you're a person that do bear good fruit, you're bearing the fruit of the Spirit, you're in the 30. There are some people in the 60. 
When they're in the 60, you can see them making advancement, advancement, but they're still religious and traditional. They don't want to let their tradition go. They don't want to let their tradition go. If God tell them to sit home on Sunday, they're not going to sit home on Sunday. Wait, that, that ain't even the 30 or the 60. Hold on. Um, the 60 traditionally is like they have certain things that they do. They might have a time where like they hear somebody got cancer. They start praying for the person to get healed, not knowing that this person done blasphemed, they done did all type of stuff. They activated that cancer realm on themselves because of their hard head, their stubbornness. So when you go to God in prayer, it's nonsense. You're trying to be a uh, super science. So you try to exceed God's wisdom about people. You try to exceed how he wants to deal with a situation. And then when people are in the 64, oftentimes, there's always going to be a person that you don't want to let them go, no matter what. You'll be trying to win them to the Lord. You'll be trying to do something. You don't want to let them go. There's people in the 60. People in the 100, they just don't care no more. They don't care about who persecute them. They don't care about their flesh. And people in the hundred, after you experience pleasure from God, you don't betray them. When you're in the hundred, if God does something for you, you're not going to let yourself slip up five months later, 10 years later, 10 months later, 10 years later, 20 years later, because you're keeping it in front of you. The Lord did this for me. I'm going to handle it correctly and I'm not going to let myself. I'm not going to let myself do him dirty. I'm going to take my healing from leprosy and use that to fuel me constantly in every season of my faithfulness to him. Did you know that? Um, did you know that every day the Holy Spirit has a problem? And you know the problem that the Holy Spirit has? The lack of worship. So the Holy Spirit comes to everybody to see where are the true worshipers? Where are the people that will give themselves over to what I'll tell them to do? And they'll make their life of no reputation. You're not trying to keep your name from being stained. You're not trying to not be misunderstood. Because I'm going to tell you like this here. Wherever you have Establish your own self-righteousness. The Holy Spirit will take you down a path where that self-righteousness will be confronted. Where that self-righteousness will be targeted. And what, whatever idol that you have in your life, the Holy Spirit leads you away from that idol. So you literally have to either be for Jesus or be for Satan because that leading of the Holy Ghost going to guide you against that idol. That Holy Spirit of God, that man, the Holy Ghost, he talks, he leads you apart from things that you have as an idol. You have it as something that is an idol. If you have something that you have engrafted yourself into that's not from the Spirit of God, He's going to guide you away from it when He's leading you and guiding you. And let me just tell you this the Holy Spirit knows you better than anybody knows you. The Holy Spirit knows you. So when he's guiding you, he's guiding you away from your pride, your fears, your anxiety, your lust, your worries. He's guiding you away from all those things on purpose. The Holy Spirit knows 
What inside of you is weak right now? So when he's guiding you, he's guiding you away from those weaknesses. Let me tell you what people often do. They fight the Holy Spirit. You don't want to let the weakness go because the truth, let me give you the truth about weaknesses. Weaknesses have been with you for a longer period of time than submission. Sweet Holy Spirit, sweet heavenly dove, stay right here with us, filling us with your love. You have been acquainted with wickedness longer than you've been acquainted with purity. So when the Holy Spirit leads you away from wickedness, you actually want to hold on to it. Dark things about you can become your pacifier without you knowing. Dark things about you could be your pacifier without you knowing. And whenever you want to feel like you're dealing and coping with stuff, you go pull on that pacifier and you put it in your mouth. And when I say your mouth, your mouth is an area where you receive things. Like you choose to engage things and you let it enter you. You let it reside with you. You let it abide in you. Your pacifier could be your perversion. Your pacifier, your pride. Your pacifier, your pollution. Your pacifier, your 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 uh your wrong pro produce. You producing the wrong thing, and that's what you hold on to when the Holy Spirit leading you away. Let me just tell you this: Peter is walking on the water. Peter is walking on the water. But Peter is more in alignment with what? The natural realm. He'd been in the natural realm for most of his life. Remember what I just told you? Some of you all have been with your weaknesses longer than your submission. The Bible says, submit yourself unto God, resist the devil, and he shall flee from you. But how are you going to submit to God if you're not willing to learn this new way? Because submitting to God is not the full totality and the entirety of how you made decisions. Submitting to how you feel. Submitting to your sensuality is the history in which you have clung to. Let me ask you a question. Oh, this deep, man. Boy, I'm in the prophetic. What if when that preacher asked to sleep with you, you said no? What if that desire to sleep with that preacher, you cast it down? Who would you be today now that you're hearing the word? You see what I'm saying? Who would you be today if you was able to resist that dimension of decision making at that time? Who would you be today if you're hearing the word now? Who would you be today if you didn't follow all the things in you that needed to be strengthened? In the past, who would you be today? Today, who would you be in the word if you didn't let yourself sleep with those people? Let yourself smoke with those people. Let yourself lie and gossip with those people. Who would you be today at this stage in your life? If you never got into a relationship with that man, that woman, who would you be today? There are a lot of things that were decided in people's history that wasn't decided from the strength of the anointing. It was decided from the things in you that needed to be trained, things needed in you that needed to be anointed, things in you that needed to be subdued, 
destroyed, relinquished, betrayed. Do you know that you have some qualities about you that if you don't betray it in June, you might not make it to July. If you don't betray it in June, you might not make it to August. The wages for sin is what? Death. You don't know when the paycheck of death is going to arrive. You know that you have an unexpected check. You might say it's miracle money, right? The unexpected check in the mail. Well, you can have an unexpected check of death. What if the unexpected check of death? What if it arrives in your mail, in your soulless schedule and you didn't expect it? What if? What if? Everybody has an element to their self where well, you're supposed to betray something. You're supposed to let it go and never take it back up again. It could be an attitude, a perspective, a reaction away. I was talking to uh, my son one time. I was talking about when I got with Dr. Mike Murdoch, I had already pit in my mind that I wasn't going to open up myself to any evil. So when I got with Dr. Mike Murdoch, if anybody wanted to date me, which people wanted to date me, Yes, sir. People wanted to. I wish I could do the hand signals. Let me let me pick my date. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. I just want you to understand the visuals. There was many situations. There was many, and I had many opportunities, many opportunities. But my respect for Dr. Mike Murdoch. And what I had already positioned myself to do, I wasn't going to do that. And, and was there sometimes that my body wanted to do that? Yes. <laughs> yes. Let me just tell you something. The reason why a man get with a woman, because we have a problem. Okay. We have a problem. And um, a man has a sexual problem. Now, there's different type of sexual problems. There are some sexual problems that are in the depths of the demonic, which means that the, the person just like they, they're driven by spirits. But there is divine sexual problems that a man has. That's why God told Adam it's not good for you to be alone because he had a schedule to use that instrument of righteousness. Now, sometimes as a man, if you listen to me as a man, you're not scheduled to use your instrument of righteousness. So you, should, you shouldn't touch it. You shouldn't, you should stay away from it and dust like that because it's not your time to use it. You see what I'm saying? And God gets pleasure when you respect him and you abstain from sexual uh, things because you're telling him, Lord, I trust you with this instrument of righteousness and you're going to give me the proper timing to use it. When you're a teenager and you start going into the, 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 the extension period of your in instrument of righteousness, things become more tempting. But I mean, as my point of view and my, my, my experiences, I'm seeing our generation is very horny. Uh, I was with my son the other day and when we was coming out uh, of, of playing basketball, there was two white girls. They looked back. I'm talking to my son. They looked back. They was in front of us. They didn't want us not to recognize it. Well, me per se. <laughs> so I, I, I kept on talking to my son. And then, you know, they looking back and stuff like that. And then the girl, this true honest story. This ain't no lie, no exaggeration. The father in heaven, my witness. The white girl started screaming at me. Like I'm talking about like groupie style. 
I'm talking about groupie style. I'm showing you something. It didn't phase me nothing. I got inside of my vehicle and I rolled out and got ghosts. You understand me? I, I'm, I'm telling you the honest truth. I didn't go drive. I knew where they was driving. I went the other way. I drove in my vehicle fast the other way. So that they couldn't follow me. Sw sw follow me. That's the right word. So they couldn't follow me. That's what I did. That's what I did. And now this is the honest truth now. Now watch this here. Let, let, me, sh let me share this with you. I went to a place one time. When I went to the place. Girl came and helped me, right? At the place. While I'm at the place, the girl getting all aroused. <laughs> Remember, I'm a prophet now. She getting all aroused, getting all percolatious. Getting all percolatious, twerkalatious, her hercolatious, Hercules, Hercules. Sherman have relations. And she getting all risen up, the resurrection. I could have utilized that. But you know what I did? I got out of job. I got out of Dodge. I know that it was raining. I know it was raining. So I got out of the rain. I went under me, underneath my umbrella. Ella. Ella A A. Under my umbrella. I'm telling you how to handle situations. That's what I'm saying. Don't be sexually inviting to people while you're in your city. You know what you're doing. You know how you're acting. You could put on a behavior that is inviting sexual tension. You know. You know when you're acting sexual. You know. And people know. And they act right they don't know. No, you know. You could feel yourself. You know when you're sexually inviting. What I'm telling you is that I shut down sexual invitation. I get out of Dodge. Now, let me just tell you something else about the spirit of lust that's in people. When people are sexual to you and they just met you, they're sexual to somebody else that they just met. And that's the other part that you don't think about. If they could just meet you and look how they're dealing with you, they don't know if you got AIDS. They don't know if you got, listen, they don't know nothing. And they willing to lay it all down. One time, girl came up to me. She gave me her phone number. I didn't ask her for her phone number. I didn't ask her for her phone number. You're not hearing me. I didn't ask her for her phone number. She gave me her phone number. She asked me if I could come hang with her. I told her no. <laughs> and I got out of Dodge. Because when you tell a woman no, she get vindictive. Them be the one that be stalking you and trying to kill you. Them the one that put the gun at your head and tell them that you got to give them vitamin D. I'm not going to play with you on today. But I want you to understand, you have to stop being inviting to people. Stop opening up yourself sexually to people. Be reserved when you go in public. And if they have demons, let their demons do what they do. You can't stop somebody from uh, warning you. In Sodom and Gomorrah, remember, they wanted them angels. Those angels wasn't sexually inviting. Imagine they wanted to sleep with angels. But you are responsible for your decisions. And if you're not blameless before the Lord, God going to judge you. He going to judge you on how you deal with people that even Satan sent to you to show God that you're not really belonging to God. You belong to Satan still. And you don't know that that's a decoy. You don't know that that person is a decoy. You don't know that that person is a decoy. 
I'm going to tell you like this here. When you sow money into God, when you honor the Lord Jesus, and when you listen to the word of the Lord, demons are looking to place a decoy in your path to trick you, to make you a laughing stock in the kingdom of hell. And if you're not careful, you're going to get tricked. And when Satan trick you, Satan done pitch you in a place of curse, spells, spells. You got a spell on your life now. You got a spell on your life. You know it, you know it, right? You got a spell on your life because you open up yourself to the wrong conversation. You open up yourself to the wrong conversation. You think a spell don't come on you, you will have a spell on you because that person was sent with demonic power and that demonic power will take you down a path that you yourself don't even have time to stop it. When I say you don't even have time to stop it because you're underneath a spell. When you're underneath a spell, you can't even recognize that you're going down the wrong path. Everything will look so right to you and feel so right to you that you won't even check. Oh, shoot. I'm being tricked. You think Samson just told the secret of his strength like that? He was underneath a spell. Samson was underneath a spell.